Create a cylinder and scale it to the size of a missile. Extrude the top, scale it down and then bevel the edge to give it a nice nose cone. For the nozzle, just extrude inside and scale the bottom face until you have something you like. Add a plane and move it to the bottom of the missile. This is going to be our fins. Adjust the vertices accordingly. Now set the origin to the 3D cursor and duplicate them to the other three sides. Use a solidify modifier to give it some thickness. Once you're happy, you can apply it and join it to the rest of the body. With the missile done, let's create a fly path. For that, create a bezier curve, go into edit mode and move the individual segments to where you need them. You can extrude the curve to get some additional segments. Try to avoid hard turns as this will look unrealistic and fake. Now select the missile, then the path and press Ctrl P and choose follow curve. To better control the speed of the missile, go to the curve setting under path animation and clear the keyframes for the evaluation type. Go to frame 1, set the evaluation time to 1 as well and set the keyframe. Now go to where you want the animation to end and set the evaluation time to 100. And again set a keyframe. You can now open the graph editor, select the second keyframe, press V and select vector. This will not have the animation ease out at the end. Now scale and move the first handle of the keyframe to dial in the acceleration over time. Take your time with this step since you can't really change it afterwards. Experiment with the position of the origin point of the missile as well to see what looks most realistic. Make sure to apply the scale and rotation of both missile and curve, otherwise this will create problems with the next step. Once you're happy with the animation, select the missile and search for bake animation. Select visual keying and make sure your frame rate matches your animation. Press OK. This will bake the animation into keyframes. The reason we are doing this is that for some reason in the particle system we are going to add shortly is only emitting on each whole frame when not doing this, making the result clump in even distances. Once you've baked the action, you need to delete the curve for you to see if it worked. Awesome! Create a circle and fill it in edit mode with F. Make sure the normals point downwards by rotating it 180 degrees. Move it to the end of the nozzle and parent it to the rest of the missile. Create a new particle system and turn off the gravity. Under source, set the particle phase to 1 to have them spawn at the center. In the physics tab, under forces, try setting the Brownian to a low value. This will have the particles move a bit randomly, which makes them spread out. If you want, you can add a plane as a ground and enable collision. To prevent the particles from just bouncing off it, you can try adding some stickiness, damping and friction. You can also add force fields to try and shape the particles more to your liking. Add an icosphere and set it to shade smooth. In the particle settings under render, set render as object and choose it from the dropdown. And of course adjust the scale. This looks nice, but every particle has the same size. We want them to get bigger over time. So go to textures and add a new one. Call it size. Switch to the textures tab and set it to blend and the coordinates to strand particles. Deselect general time as influence and instead select size. Under color, enable the color ramp. You now probably need to adjust the scaling of the overall particles again. In the color ramp you can change the black handle to a dark ray if you want the particles to spawn with a certain size, not start from zero. Nice! Depending on the length and speed of your animation, you need to add a lot more particles to fill in the holes. You can also play with the scale randomness to get a different look. Now select the icosphere and give it a material. You can either use a volume scatter or an emission shader plugged into the volume. For background stuff, you can mix a diffuse with an emission shader, which will make it much more performant. Throw in a transparent shader for some additional realism. This works in both EV and Cycles. If you are super fancy, you can use a gradient texture set to spherical. If you use the object output on the texture coordinate and mix in a noise texture using linear light, you can get some additional smoke details. And voila, you have yourself a missile smoke trail.